So there's a lot of content here in TMP. You guys know that. It's been that way for many years. Motos, boating, now scuba, outdoor adventures, all types of gear reviews. And actually, it's all equal now. It's not just guns and knives as voted on by the viewers, by what they watch and by what they don't watch. But for now, the gun show is still intact. We're cranking it out. It takes a lot of work and a lot of money. I would have loved to have gotten this review to you a while back on the RPR. Things being what they are here in TMP, personal life included. Dude, I guess I'm lucky I'm getting to it at all. So here it is, tabletop review of the Ruger Precision Rifle. And I really like it actually. I am going to say some negative things about it and they are deserved. Here's how it works in TMP if you've never watched one of my reviews. I am completely independent. I do not parrot other people's reviews. I don't regurgitate manufacturer data and just put it in camera form. I just go out with the crew, we shoot it, we gather our own opinions, and then data's brought here, tabletop. Right before I film, like tonight, I'll go out on the internet for about 20 minutes and click around and see what other people have said about the gun just by way of reference. Sometimes it is so over the top wrong, it's fun bringing that to tabletop. I wouldn't say that's the case with the RPR. I think it's a really good rifle. But I, in the couple reviews that I read, I didn't see anything that indicated anything negative about the RPR. This rips and I will beard. have a couple negative things to say. Great. Most weapon yeah. systems are that way. And uh, I'm not affil affiliated with Ruger. Uh, I've given several of their products negative reviews. They pretty much uh, are not nothing fancy fans, I take it. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, the truth just has a way of doing that. I mean, if you're an RPR fan, you're in a good place. Cheers. I think you'll be happy with a, pretty much most of the things I will say. I'm going to talk pretty seriously with you about competitive options and about the Ruger Halo effect which I think is totally intact. It's kind of like a product has been out there by other manufacturers and really doesn't take off, kind of ignored. And then when Ruger does it, everyone you know, just starts fluttering their feathers and acting like it's the greatest thing ever to happen to the gun world. I am a little bit irritated with that. I just don't get it. And I'll, I'll give you a whole bunch of evidence to that, like that, either. That, that side of things. The watch today, by the way, is a Pro Trek in orange camo. Link below. It is awesome. I think it's a PRG whatever 300. You'll see the link below. Love it. Atomic Solar, the important stuff. Yes, I do watch reviews, and they are also core content. How long will this video go? Um, it's not feature length anymore. In fact, I'm going to go light on some details. We are not going to do field strip, and some other things we'll just kind of gloss over. What we talk about in these lightweight reviews, or I should say abbreviated reviews in TMP, which has been going on for about six months, maybe longer now, is features. How does it shoot and would I buy it? How's that? I want to start off with uh, features. Notice, by the way, we did not really say philosophy of use. I may touch on that a little bit with this gun, but not much. We're not going to have a separate talking point. That in and of itself usually takes 10 minutes. And I've done it a lot over 11 minutes years here at this point i did come out with my own precision rifle it was a tika custom build it was called a nailer the nut and fancy long range for the few individuals that bought those guns they have gone way up in value they were underpriced they were like 2200 dollars, depending on the feature set you ordered they're worth a lot more and in a lot of ways the ruger precision rifle reminds me of that of the nailer and I started getting requests to review the RPR back then. They are like, hey, that's awesome, but I can't afford it. I need something less expensive, a factory-produced rifle. <coughs> Excuse me. And the RPR came out, and guys were excited. And understandably so, because I think it, in a lot of ways it does promise to offer that style of performance. Maybe that, that exact level of performance in a factory-produced gun. Does it do that? Hmm. We'll have to get to talking about that and when I talk about how does it shoot. I'm going to start back here and go forward. It does have a nice butt pad. I'm going to go super quick too. I tape it with electrical tape because it doesn't grab. I've talked about that a bazillion times. Totally adjustable, cheek pieced, length of pull adjustment. 
They have some swing level levers here that will lock on to a metal chassis, a metal stabilizing tube. And then we have an AR-15 buffer tube back here too. And I assume that you can take this all off, probably save a lot of weight, you'll lose the adjustment, and put on an AR-15 stock. It is, an, uh, I think, totally compatible with that. And you can do it if you want to. I like, I like the stock though. I mean, I think it's great. It's not groundbreaking, however. There's a lot of other chassis rifle systems that have used it for a while. And we'll mention some of those. It really reminds me of the Remington MSR setup. And I wouldn't be a bit surprised. Or the RACS, R-A-C-S. That's the same chassis system that Remington does. And, you know, Ruger probably looked at that and said, hey, let's do an interpretation of that. And that's what you got. So you have total adaptability to the shooter. That's all good. Pistol grip is good, too. It's hollow. There's no storage in it. It's a proprietary pistol grip in that this style is you can put on an AR-15 pistol grip if you don't like it. Didn't have a problem with it. I wouldn't swap it at all. The trigger is superb, but it should be because I think it's kind of a copy of, again, the Savage Accu trigger, which I've always liked. Yes, it's probably different. Not probably. It is different mechanically. It has to be because the Accu trigger is patented. But Ruger's Marksman Trigger, this one is really, really good. It pulls super light from two and a quarter pounds up to five pounds, fully adjustable. It's a bladed trigger. We've been shooting them for years, for years. The magazine compatibility is a huge thumbs up for their RPR. So we can run SR25 DPMS compatible magazines. You have a 10 round included right here. I ran, I ran the Brownells aluminum in it the DPMS steel and then the PMAGs and they all worked great. No problems at all that I can remember. Again, there's so many guns being pushed through the testing phase. If I rem if I forget something, I'll annotate it, show you the footage, but that's the way I see it right now. The quality overall is excellent. It really kind of presents like a, a custom rifle in the quality. Like the CNC machining that you see on the lower and the upper, awesome. The lower is 7075 T6 aluminum. The upper is 4140 steel, this portion right here. Again, we're not taking the gun apart. No time for that anymore. The quality is perfect. I don't see any problems. The handguard didn't loosen at all, unlike some other guns I've been shooting. Out of the box, I'm not tightening screws. I might lubricate it, and then off to the race as we go, but I'm not going to go through their screw set. That's their job at the factory. I say that because some people act like that's what you should do when you get a gun. Hey, you need to go through it and make sure it's all tight. No, they need to do that. That's called quality control. And apparently Ruger's is pretty good. Had no problems at all. 20 MOA Picatinny rail right here. That is awesome. Well, now I'm running an AR-15 height of single piece scope mount. That's just a testing and review scope. It's a Burris. It's good enough. We like it actually. We've had it for years, shown it on a lot of different guns, and that's an Aero Precision super lightweight mount that we buy in Amazon for like 89 bucks. Not the FDE version, that one's harder to find. I, those kind of sold out, but the black ones are out there. Just put it on, leave it on. There's no backup iron sight, so, so if you think that's necessary, you might have to come up with a different solution, and then you'll get into scope height problems clearing your irons. Uh, for me, this is a totally a scoped rifle proposition. I think for most guys, they'd be the same way. Nice paddle release, by the way, on the magazine. No problems noted with that. Uh, it's cool. So it's not push button, just paddle. Love the bolt on it. Oh my gosh, is that a nice bolt. It's, a, I believe, a 70 degree throw. It's also made out of 4140 steel, so more high quality. Three lug bolt. It is coated, I think, with nickel boron. It might just be chrome. I'm not sure in the Ruger American. But, man, the bolt. It's so refreshing to actually go out and shoot a bolt gun that has no ejection problems, that has no extraction of problems. It just throws brass. It's responsive to the shooter. Like, I really want to throw brass. I can eject it more forcefully. If I want to just slowly dump it at the shooting range, it'll do it, too. It's, the whole smoothness of the Ruger precision rifle is superb. It is so good. It's a fully enclosed action. Wow, it's super rigid. Here. We'll see the accuracy here in just a second. But I can't tell you how fun it was to shoot and how enjoyable it was to shoot something that had no problems. 
and we've brought bolt guns to the table here. You've seen them over the years. If not, go look around in my playlists. Uh, in fact, I probably need to make a playlist if I don't already have one about you know bolt guns reviewed. There are several that surprised us. Several. Won't get into brands and models right yet. But, dude, this is so excellent. And, as you can see, it has last shot hold open for a bolt gun. That's cool. Is that completely innovative? No. There's others that have done it as well. But it's cool. Really cool. Let's take a look at this side. And so, by the way, for review, thank you to Gunnies, the great American gun store. They are the ones responsible for loaning me this one. i got to close the bolt here. This is serial number 1800-66459, reviewed in TMP, if you care. Thank you, Gunnies. Thank you, Wyatt. It's actually Wyatt. So, no money being changed hands there. It's just, you know, I mentioned this store. I expect you guys support them with purchasing. That's how it works in the gun show. And then I take the guns back, and he sells them as used guns. And if you like, it has a TMP certificate of authenticity. I don't sign the guns anymore just because maybe your future buyer doesn't care, doesn't want it. Safety is a 45-degree throw. Some guys really love that. I think it's kind of unnecessary. I've never dug a 45-degree safety throw. I've shot AR-15s, M4s, M16s. I'm so used to a 90-degree throw. I don't need less. It's so easy to do. So I think it's oversold. I've always said that. Ample room in the trigger, trigger guard. That's awesome. As is the stock. And I talked about the adjustability of the stock already. But what we didn't show is how easy it is to fold. Oh my gosh. Well done, Ruger. That is such a great stock system. Because I don't have to bring it out of a dovetail joint and really rack it down as a lot of these are and i'll give you an example the galil ace is that way it's a great stock super sturdy no movement but it's a pain to extend and uh, you know fold again this one's super simple push button done i did notice by the way in shooting if we talk about how to shoot ergonomics if i did not have this cheek rest all the way back i was getting my my beard pulled around here somewhere so you might have to, well, adjust it. It's fully adjustable. And once you spend some time with it, it'll all make sense to you. And you have a place to put a monopod back here, if you, if you like, for stabilizing it. Maybe you would bipod it up front, monopod in the back, so you have a really nice stable chute from there. The handguard is narrow enough. I actually like the handguard. I have no problems with it at all. I would not replace it. I did read tonight. Someone was saying it's a Samson Evolution. I don't know if it is or not, but you know, whatever. It's someone, I would assume, making it for Ruger. I would just leave it on. Ruger officially calls it the RPR Short Action Handguard, if you're interested. And check out this barrel. <laughs> that is a chunky barrel. It is thick. Really thick. Now, Ruger calls it a medium profile barrel on their web page, their information. Mm, I would say it's heavy profile. That is where some of the weight is coming from on this. Actually, and we're going to hit this right now, very heavy rifle. Here comes a negative thing. Very heavy. Now, I don't want to get into big, long discussion about it because it takes video time. Said it a bazillion times before. Weight is good at the bench. Weight is good when you're in position. Weight is great when you're on a team and you're ready for the shot. It stabilizes the gun, makes it easier to shoot, settles it down, follow-up shots come more quickly. All that's a given. But hauling it around is a nightmare. I mean, naked, without anything on it, this sucker, the Ruger Precision Rifle, weighs 10 pounds, 10 ounces. 10 pounds, 10 ounces. Is that a showstopper for me? It really depends. We have to talk about POU briefly here. What are you going to do with it? Competition rifle where you're not lugging it over some pretty technical and difficult terrain. Yeah, great job. If I'm doing some type of competition, precision rifle competition, sniper competition, and I have to haul the RPR over a couple miles with other gear, forget it. I ain't doing it. No way. For without rule of law in the fantasy 
and it really is fantasy situation where you'd have to make a long range shot no way as a military sniper granted this gun's not in the military system but we're just talking no way it's too heavy there's too many other great bolt gun options that weigh much less that are just as accurate just as affordable i'll mention a couple later just forget it no and a lot of that weight getting back to the barrel is right here also we talked about this mechanism that's a lot of metal you got picatinny rails anytime they go crazy on the cnc milling it's cnc this steal that it all adds up dudes it all adds up if it's a recreational philosophy of use you're just going to your range and you're shooting you know a couple times a year having fun i say go for it no problems i mean the weight at the bench again is excellent no surprise there 5r rifling we talked about that and the muzzle brake right here oh i like it it's a ruger precision rifle they call it a hybrid muzzle brake by some estimates reducing muzzle rise over 50 percent now i don't know if it's the weight of the rpr or the design of the muzzle brake but i'll tell you this gun didn't go anywhere during shooting i mean it is the most stable three-weight bolt gun i've ever shot it really is again the weight again probably a well-designed muzzle brake as well so awesome five eighths by 24 threading so if you want to spin on a can you know just a thread on can you can no pun intended there it's excellent that's your features review hope you liked it if i forget something i'll throw it back in as we talk some more how did it shoot well i've kind of jumped ahead already and told you that i enjoyed shooting it we enjoyed shooting it it was fun it was smooth doodle loved it he was like man this is a really nice shooting guy I get that. That was the bolt the especially the the yeah, length of the bolt all that stuff that, but where it but really comes together and run. where we really have to look very critically at the ruger precision rifle is accuracy right eject, right packages. now I'm not going out anymore, and it was stupid when I did this in the early days of TMP and doing a test over a span of years, and then I bring it to tabletop. Yes, I used to do that, and it was dumb. We don't support it. So what you get is a couple outings, and you're going to get the data, and that's what we got. So in that, I would say the Ruger Precision Rifle, here comes kind of something negative, underperforms for what it is. How's that for honesty? It really does. Let me explain where I'm coming from on this. No doubt a guy will have an RPR. He'll be in the comments goes, yeah, I shoot one whole groups all day long out of it. Well, I'd, I'd like to see it. I really would. I don't care what caliber you have, but one hole, one ragged hole all day long. That means every group. We shoot operationally. We shot it in the desert and this is kind of what it's producing. I was amazed, yes, we started with Wolf just for side end, just a couple rounds for side end. I was amazed it shot that well. But look at PMC. That's awful. Aguila, which is a NATO spec 76251 round. Not so great, not so great. Relax, I'm getting to the precision loads. This is just the ballpark stuff. And by the way, I like to know if we are bolt gun will shoot standard ball well. I think it says a lot about a barrel, doesn't it? It does. Hey, the barrel's really good. I have a lot of paper that I've thrown in front of the camera to prove it. You know, if it shoots ball well, it's a good barrel, it's a good system. This is mediocre. It's it's like, a, a, I don't know, an average semi-auto. Told you I'd keep it real. I mean, I ain't, it is what it is. Here's the range shooting, and I'll bounce between the desert and the range. So that's gold medal match. I gave it a squiggly line. For another bolt gun, I'd go, I'd probably give that an up arrow. But what I'm expecting out of a basically 11 pound, 12 pound 308 rifle configured like this in a steel and aluminum chassis with a barrel that thick, I am expecting sub MOA. I'm expecting one third MOA. And for your reference, I'm a half MOA shooter both in the desert and on the bench. So I don't, it ain't me. And a lot of times it ain't the load. This gold medal match is amazing. It's third MOA ammo. I've, I brought it to table out of sappers and bolt guns, third MOA. I gave this an up arrow because it did come into one MOA. So this is the same load, Federal 168 gold medal match. Now, these are all good trigger pulls. If I pull it or if there's some human factor stuff, I'll note it. 
I always, I've always done that. Winchester bond to tip. Uh, I forget exactly load what it was, but it was a high quality, super expensive load. I had five rounds of it. Uh, four, I guess. It didn't do great. PMC match. 168 grain match. That's that's underwhelming, guys, for this type of rifle. It's underwhelming. Atomic. Atomic match is third MOA, dudes. Third MOA. Let me see if I have paper to prove it. Oh, check this out. I shot this today. So this is out of a Smith & Wesson M&P 10 semi-automatic AR-10 style rifle. There's Atomic shooting out of a semi-auto better than the Ruger Precision. I'm just giving you the data, dudes. Just give, It was the same day. It was today. Here's that PMC match load. Same load. Out of a semi-auto, out of a bolt. Holy freak. I'm not going to say it's awful. It's not. Trophy. But I expect more out of a damn 12-pound rifle. Five rounds. Freedom Munitions, 175 match. Not great. Although two rounds did go into that hole. And I haven't really seen this load perform impressively out of any gun. Maybe you hovering over MOA is what I see. PMC 168 gray match. Another squiggly. Now, here we go back to the desert. And this was yesterday, actually. Federal munish, uh, Freedom Munitions 175 grain match. Yeah, that's awful, guys. It's not good. And the stability is excellent. It was windy, but it was a headwind. Headwind. It wasn't a crosswind. And I felt pretty good about stability. But I was like, you know, it was windy in the desert. Let me take it to the range. I did that today. You're seeing the same results, are you not? Whether I'm shooting in the desert or the range, you're seeing the same results. Gold medal match, gold medal match. Gold medal match, freedom munition, same results. 168 grain AMAX coming in about MOA. That's good. Tomic again. Uh, Tomic again. Down. It's okay. It's okay. I'm not saying it's awful. I expect more. You should too from a 12 pound rifle. Then I take the Ruger Precision Rifle out to 300 yards, shot this, and the most accurate load that I was seeing was Atomic 168, so I shot it. And yes, it's about a two and a half inch screw although this is a flyer. So, and these are all good trigger pulls. And with the heat mirage, it's kind of hard to see where they're hitting. I could so kind of see them strike, and I was like, that's cool. I was pretty happy. Then when I saw that, I was like, oh, crap. So it's a five-shot group. And just for grins, I also shot the Sapper, the semi-automatic Smith & Wesson M&P 10. It did about the same. <laughs> well, okay, it's a little bit wider. 3.8 to 2.5. This wins. But if I take this into account, not so much. I'll say accuracy, therefore, is good. It's not outstanding from my shooting. Hey, I read so-and-so's. I saw such-and-such -such video. It's one hole all day long. I didn't see it. I didn't see it. In the time and interest level that my viewers show, you know, the outings to match that, I ain't seeing it. Now, that being said, I think you can get one hole groups, but you're going to have to do a, either a load workup or find what the That's gun here, likes. Maybe what away. the gun likes. And I might have another piece of paper here. And I'll just say it right now. Uh, wow, well, I won't get to whether I'll buy it quite yet. But a competitive option that you should really consider, really consider, sweet dive watch, by the way, coming off the table. That's a Torpedo 44 by Momentum. Clearing the way. You should consider the Bagara. Oh my gosh, what a great rifle that is. The B14ACIS. Here we go. So that's a Bagara in the desert shooting five rounds of Federal 180 grain yeah, hunting smooth. ammo. That's Jardine shooting that. Hunting Shack 168 grain AMAX. Ultimax 168 grain match. This is what I'm talking about. This is in the desert operational conditions. Aguila performed about the same way. Not great. PMC, but look at the Atomic. Shooting better. That's what I'm saying. That's a level of performance that the RPR should deliver. It did not do so in my review. No apologies. Take it. Don't take it. I don't care. That's just the way it is. So how'd it shoot? 100% reliable. Great trigger. Low recoil. Super fast follow-up shots. Fun. I wish it was third MOA. Granted, 6.5 Creed might do a little bit better. It's also available in that chambering. Maybe 5.56 five, might do a little bit better. Available in that chambering. But I thought 308, good test bed. A lot of guys are, all the guys are talking about 6.5 Creed. 
that's what the nailers chambered in by the way i love six five it's so darn expensive to shoot though i don't want to spend the money now we get to the crux of the issue would i buy it value and options well it retails the ruger precision rifle by the way this is a mmp 40 long slide m20 reviewed highly recommended love this gun cool tabletop decoration msrp sixteen hundred dollars for the rpr is it worth it well streets at about 1300s gunnies is selling it for 1300 which i think is a fabulous price cabela's is selling it for 1500 dollars every day of the week they do that i probably would not buy it for two reasons number one is i did not see it deliver the oh, accuracy that me. i would like not me. now maybe someone it's rolls in and is like well you didn't let the barrel break in i'll say this bullshit bullshit because I shot a lot of guns and they don't need break-in. That's a myth. They don't. Now, will a barrel tighten up over the span of hundreds of rounds? Some do, some don't, in my experience. It, every barrel is different. And I just say no. I don't accept that. The out of the box, it should deliver. I just showed you the Bagara. I didn't break that in. You know, 500 rounds. Now, let's spend hundreds and hundreds of dollars on break-in and then we'll shoot it for accuracy i ain't doing it i don't have the time or the money That's um accuracy not up to where i would like it i've said that about three times and then also it's too heavy for what i would use the gun for it's too heavy i'm not interested in a 12 pound 308 12 pound 338 lapua yeah i'm interested in that more not a 308 not a 65 creed that's insane my nailer is a lot lighter than really that, and nice it's, it will outshoot the RPR all day long from my own shooting. You're talking third aim away. Go watch that review. It's and a lot of PC. others. Let's get into competitive options in case you think I'm lying. How about the Mossberg MVP and light chassis? It's lighter at eight and a half pounds. It's cheaper at a thousand bucks. Haven't shot it yet, but I suspect it's a good shooter because I just got done with the MVP test, and those rock. You're talking super accurate, much more accurate than the Ruger Precision. Much more. The Mossberg MVP product, extremely accurate. I don't know what they're doing with those barrels, but they're awesome. Weatherby VGD, it's eight and three quarter pounds. It's also about 1,100, 1,000, 1,000 bucks cheaper. And that's, I'm also making the point that I'm sticking with chassis rifles, not standard bolt actions. We'd be here all night talking about competitive options, and I'm not covering all of them, just a few. But again, Sometimes when Ruger comes out with something like a chassis rifle, like, oh my gosh, it's so awesome. It's the first of its kind. No, it isn't. It isn't. I mean, five years ago, we vis visited with Everly Stock and saw his uber expensive stealth chassis for the 700. Same concept. It's just a chassis, dropping it in there. Now, this one's fully enclosed. It's ground up designed that way, but so a lot of these others, others like the VGD. How about the Bagara Precision chassis? It, 10 and a half pounds, so it's the same weight as this one. $1,500. Savage Model 10, Ashbury Precision, 10 and a half pounds, same. How about the Remington MSR? That's way too expensive. That's like $11,000, insanely expensive. Well, you could get a Remington, you know, Rax RACS chassis, put that in. I would never do it, but some guys would. I mentioned already, and, and I'm, again, just throwing a couple out there, the Bagara B14. I would buy that over the Ruger Precision. Here comes some footage of me shooting it. If you haven't seen it already, that's a nine pound rifle and Gunny's sells that for $930, has a full pistol grip. It, it was every bit as smooth and fun to shoot as the Ruger Precision. Super quality, lighter, less expensive, and it outshot the RPR. There you go. I mean, guys, oh, dude, you got to review the RPR. Okay, here you go. I don't do, you know, you know, always positive reviews. I will say that I do like the RPR. I did say that at the outset. I don't hate it. It'll reflect on my, my likability scale. It's actually a pretty good rifle. If it was honestly shooting into one ragged hole, third MOA, half MOA with really good loads, and even with balls shooting like one and a half inches, which we did not see, my enthusiasm would be greater. It would. Because I'm an accuracy guy. I like it when guns shoot accurately. Especially when they are set up to shoot accurately. Like this. 12 pounds. That's heavy. It should shoot accurately. It has 
a barrel as thick as a howitzer. You know, it has a muzzle brake like a howitzer. It should shoot accurately. No doubt in the comments you'll see guys, well, I don't, I didn't have that experience. You know, I, mine shoots one hole all day long. I said that before. I can't lie about the data, dudes. I show you, I show you the video this proof. I show you the paper. The That's, that Great. is what it is. Yeah. So I answered the question, would I buy it? For me, I wouldn't. But I, I wouldn't fault someone for buying it. Uh, I would like to see you go on a Red Skies adventure in TMP and hike in 10 miles with your RPR along with all the other gear. I'd love to see that, especially in 100 degree heat. You, you're going to get home and you're going to sell it. I can, I'll tell you that right now. You're going to go, even a nine pound rifle is too heavy. It's, uh, you got to shave ounces. There you go. RPR review, TMP, gun show.